This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Gross Mordorf. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jack B and Brad. Thank you for being farm barons. So Gross Mordorf can be found over at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now let's read a little bit of the description. Welcome to Gross Mordorf. All standard functions of Farm Sim 22 are installed. There are 12 fields, four meadows, four viable forest places. There's a horse pasture, cattle trade, grain silo, BGA, sawmill, restaurant, carpentry, oil mill, grain mill, sugar factory, and much, much more. Let's go ahead and load on in. We are going to use the mods that we typically use when we take a look at these maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, field leads, field calculator, and precision farming. I will say if you load this map up in Farm Manager or start from scratch, you will find the main farm completely built out with machinery. The only exception is that you will not own any land. That is the really the only difference between New Farmer and Farm Manager or start from scratch. Now, if you happen to load this map up with Precision Farming, this map is making use of the generic soil map. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Now, one thing you may notice about this map is it has a few fields and they are all extremely large with the exception of, let's say, field 12, 11, and 13. Now we do have all the standard crop types available to us here on Farm Sim 22. And if we go ahead and take a look at the lands area, you'll see that we start out by owning the main farm, which is right here and includes field five and six. Now there are several viable areas around town. This is our starting farmhouse right here. We have a viable plot right next door and then several here right around the corner. Now I checked most of these viable plots and these plots do have some buildings on them, but they are not sellable. So you could buy a house and then put a placeable sleep trigger on it, but you're not going to be selling those and kind of making your own little area for maybe a smaller production placement or something like that. Now we do also have a biogas plant, which is going to be located up here. And it is not viable because, well, we own the biogas plant at the start. We also have our farm silo way over here on the western side of the map, whereas our farm is here more towards the east. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our field farmland lease screen. And this screen is going to help us see how big the viable farmlands are, what fields are associated with those farmlands, and then how much the land is going to cost us. I have to say, some of these are rather interesting. For example, we have field 12. It's 0.75 hectares in size. And then we get up here to some of these other fields where we have field 3, which is 49 hectares in size. So quite the variance in field sizes. Take a look at the actual field calculator screen. This is going to show us the actual field sizes themselves as compared to the actual viable farmlands, which is what we were just looking at. But look at these field sizes. Field 1, 38 hectares. Field 2, 27. Field 3, 48. Field 7, 25. Field 10, 29 hectares in size. Then we get to the really small fields. Field 12, 0.72. Field 15, 1.65. Field 5, which we own, 0.73. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the generic soil map and how it is applied to the fields. As you can see, we get quite the sampling of soil types across pretty much every field. Now, field 15 is almost exclusively salty clay. But other than that, we see that there is a good sampling of nearly every soil type across every field, especially these larger fields like field 1 and field 3. 
Now we do have our standard crop counter available to us here on this particular map. And if we take a look at our prices screen, you will see that we do have the ability to sell all of the available crops that we can grow here on Farm Sim 22, including multiple sell points for a sugar beet cut. Take a look, we have multiple areas to sell our animal outputs and eggs, wool, and milk. But when it comes down here to our production areas, well, things start to fall a little bit. We can sell most of our production, but oddly enough, we cannot sell fabric, nor can we sell clothing. I say it oddly enough because we have a spinnery built into the map. We have no way of selling anything that the spinnery produces or that the tailor shop would produce from the fabric that the spinnery produced without putting down a different sell point. Now, that's not where it ends. We also do not have the ability to sell cereal. Now, that's not quite as bad because we don't have a cereal factory built into the map, but we also do not have the ability to sell chocolate, nor do we have the ability to sell furniture. Now, we do have a sawmill on the map, so we can sell planks. We also have a carpentry facility on the map, which will produce furniture, but we do not have the ability to sell said furniture so one mod that you may wish to really add to your gameplay if you are playing on this map would be the sell everything mod now we do also have the ability to buy bulk lime and we do have a stone crusher on the map as far as our starting equipment most of the starting equipment is fairly new and well maintained none of it is leased and if we do take a look we do not have any animals at the start we do have a cow barn and a horse pasture on the map. The cow barn is on our main farm. The horse pasture is on a separate plot of land. We do have contracts available on the map, and we own the biogas plant at the start. This map does include the 20 collectibles from Erlengrot. Those would be the cheese wedges. And if we make our way down the street from our starting farmhouse, we get to the farm entrance, which, if you forgive me, is located right here. And down this long lane, we now are at our main farm. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Steyr 8150 small tractor, as well as the Kloss Axion 870 medium tractor and the John Deere T560 harvester. We have the 2017 pickup truck. With the harvester, we also have the John Deere 625X rain header. And then we have that paired up with the N40BX Nardi heady trailer. We have the Kloss Karat 140TD trailer. In fact, we have a pair of those. We have the Limpkin Titan 18 Plow. We have the Rebel Classic 600T Disc Harrow. We have the Amazon KG 3001 Super Power Harrow. We have the DC 401 Subsoiler. The Ponager Terrasim C6F Cedar. We have the Maxima 3 Till Planter. We have the Nardi, sorry, the Hardy Navigator 4000 Delta Force Pull Behind Sprayer for our liquid fertilizer and herbicide. We have the Breedock K105 lime and solid fertilized spreader. We have the F240 small front mower. The Alpine Hit 4.4 tether, as well as the Zelon CFS 2501DO forage wagon. We have the Limpkin, oh, not the Limpkin, but the Lizard MKS8 liquid trailer. We have the Quickie 6 Q6M front loader arms, as well as the pallet fork and bale spike. And then we round it all out with a pair of weights in a 1200 and 600 kilogram gloss weight. Now, if we take a look here at our mods and DLCs, you'll see that we do not have any particular mods that are associated with the map. 
And if we take a look here at our main farm, I will say that a lot of the items on the farm can be sold. Some of the decorative items like this building, the chairs, the hand trolley, they cannot be sold. Nor can things like the racks and such that are inside these buildings. If you sell the buildings, then a lot of this decorative stuff will remain on the map. We have our lime silo right there. Something else you're going to notice is that the farm includes a lot of these concrete plates. These cannot be sold, but I did do a test and I can place a building on top of them. So these plates will not affect your ability to place anything on the farm should you sell these buildings, but they will kind of bleed through the ground of your building so they will look kind of awkward if you do try to place something on those so we have our cow barn with feeding robot we have a large slurry storage expansion tank right there since this is a base game cow area i don't think we need to go in too much detail as to where all of the various triggers are located of our storage is in here and then we have some custom buy points in fact let's go ahead and go into build mode and come over here to tools and we're going to see that we have a custom liquid fertilizer seed fertilizer and herbicide buy point that we could place down on the map we also if we take a look here at our animals we do have a custom horse pasture and this thing is absolutely massive and we're going to see this placed already on the map but if we want to put down another one we certainly can do that take a look at our painting textures we've got some pretty basic farm sim 22 painting textures going on there no custom buildings silos silo extensions containers and then again we have these placeable buy points we have our fuel right there and interesting enough the shop trigger is actually here at the main farm it is located in fact right there in front of us so let's go ahead and actually buy our Mahindra And we'll see where things spawn in at. So we don't have a huge area here for our machinery to spawn in at. Given the fact that we've got our shop trigger located right there. We've got some machinery already parked over there. Given the size of these fields, I would like to have seen a little bit larger equipment spawning area here. Then we have a pair of silage bunkers. trigger right there and then we have another trigger right here and that is pretty much overall the main farm tour let's go ahead and get set up for the fly around we'll fly around the map come back here jump in our Mahindra and then drive around to some of the various cell points and as you can see from the PDA cell points are spread out quite a bit on this map Get a little bit of attitude here and then take a little bit of a look around. And as you can see, as we rotate, field three is coming into view just below us. And boy, is this a big, big field. And then we have a split. Now we're taking a look at field two. Field one across the street there. Field 10 is the field with the tree clumps in the middle of it. You have field 9 all the way on the far edge of the town. But we have some pretty large fields scattered around here. Now, specific to the fields that we own, we own field 5, which is located just below there. We have our hay 
loft also right there and then we own field six just located right here so now we have our farmhouse right here this is where we started and then if we go this direction we have the horse pasture located right here You see how much of a massive area that we have working here. This whole fenced in area is the horse pasture. And as we make our way down this residential area, we have our farm silo located right here. Our farmer's market cell point as well as our dairy is located right here, which again is rather interesting because we do not have the ability to sell chocolate. So we have three production items built into the map that we do not have any way of selling outputs from. So we have a spinnery, which we cannot sell fabric, nor can we sell clothing, so we can't even put down a tailor. Here we have our stone crusher. We have the dairy, so we cannot sell chocolate. And then we also have a carpentry facility but we cannot sell furniture so below we have our bale cell point or animal dealer cell point and our animal dealer itself now as far as other production items on the map we have a total of nine productions built into the map the bga sawmill a spinnery the grain mill carpentry the oil mill the sugar mill the bakery and the dairy so we are going to give the map a full point with regard to having built-in production. Speaking of that, we have our grain mill right there and our sugar mill. With respect to can we sell all the base game crops, animal outputs, and items that we can produce, we are going to have to knock it back a little bit since there are one, two, three, four, five things that we cannot sell. I'm going to knock it back a quarter of a point. So the map is going to get three quarters of a point with respect to having the ability to sell everything that can be made, grown, or produced as far as an animal output goes. So we have our biomass heating plant down below. Then let's go ahead and fly to the north over field three and two. Right now we're over field three, which is 122 acres in size. Now with respect to the farms being customizable, since the decorative bits cannot be sold and some of the decorative buildings cannot be sold, we're going to give the map, again, three quarters of a point with respect to the farm being customizable. So we're flying over field two now, which is 69.95 acres in size. We're coming up to the spinnery right here which is pretty much useless unless we put down a cell point because we cannot sell the fabric it produces nor can we make clothing by putting down a tailor and then taking that fabric to the tailor because we can't sell the clothing either hopefully the map will be updated to rectify that situation so that we will then be able to say that we can indeed sell everything that could be possibly produced in the base game of farm sim 22 on the map now with respect to the buildings using the appropriate texturing technique a fair bit of the buildings are not using the texture technique so we are going to give the map just half of a point in that regard so down here at the bga we have scales going in and out we have a three-sided bunker we have two pull through bunkers then we have our bga right there we have our dump station we have our dump area for our manure and then we have our pickup for digestate 
the sawmill is located right here and we do have the ability to sell planks if we buy the sawmill but be very careful that we do not take the planks to the carpentry because we do not have the ability to sell our furniture and that's going to be probably the end of that discussion so we've got wood chips there we have our pallet spawn point we have our log point and then we have our log cell trigger but here we have our oil factory as well as our spinnery not our spinnery sorry we have two cell points over here the Johnson's Farmer's Market, and then our oil mill. Here we have the carpentry. And all I can say is the sell everything mod will be very handy if you do play on this particular map. Let's go ahead and fly over field 10 which is 70, nearly 78 acres in size. We come up to the town, we have a restaurant cell point below. We have our horse area to the left, which we've already taken a look at. We have our animal dealer and I think we pretty much have hit all of the cell points that are on the map so let's make our way back to the main farm at which time we're going to jump in the Mahindra and then do the drive around now I was really hoping that we could sell these concrete plates or that we could paint these concrete plates on the ground. But sadly, they are permanently here. And if we go to put a building down, like I said, they will kind of seep through. Let's go ahead and kind of just demonstrate that real fast with a small, small building. Let's do something with a floor to it. So you see how these are going to seep through. This building does have its own concrete floor, but if you try to put it here, those concrete plates are going to basically show up on top of the floor. I do like that it will let you put them down over the plates, but I'm just not a fan of the plates showing through. Overall, this map is fairly flat. Shouldn't have too much of an issue in running lower horsepower machinery in order to get around the map, maybe save a little bit of money. Here we have our bakery production. This is Space Game Bakery. So we have our dump station, our pallet spawn point. We have our interactive trigger around the front. This shed we can make use of. We can put machinery in this side. And on the right side, we actually have a workshop maintenance trigger. Located right here. Then over here, we have a herbicide buy point and a liquid fertilizer by point. Continue up this road. We've got field one on our left and field two on our right. We're gonna make our way up here to the spinnery which is in the extreme north east corner of the map.
and this is just the base game spinnery. So we have our dump station, we have our pallet spawn point. Now, I said that we had our Erlengrot collectibles here on the map, but lo and behold, we have some Elm Creek collectibles here. But if we take a look here at our statistics screen, you can see we only have 20 collectibles. So that is kind of what threw me for a loop. I guess the 20 collectibles would be the Elm, not the Elm Creek, but the Holt Bay Laroon collectibles, the game cartridges. We appear to have 20 wooden toys scattered around. Let's go ahead and double back down the road we came up here. And then we'll go check out the biogas plant. Just to the north of Field Pen. Right over in that general direction. You see how flat these fields are. Yeah, we'll make a right turn here. I did see a biogas plant sign at the road corner. So it is nice to see the things are Clearly marked. Now, with this being still a standard size map, with these fields being so massive, I think the map is going to kind of play a little bit larger than it really is. It's going to feel larger than it really is. Just by the way the fields are all laid out and the kind of the size of the fields themselves. Pull through, two pull through bunkers, three sided. There we have our digester, we have our interactive figure, our dump station for slurry, and then our digestate fill point. We do indeed have proper silage triggers on both of these. Some folks may wonder why we actually get out and check to see if we actually have the trigger pop-ups on those silage bunkers as well. The reason we do that is because we have seen multiple times over where we have run into such silage bunkers at the BGA or elsewhere where you just walk into them and there's nothing that pops up. Always want to make sure that the silage bunkers actually have a working trigger in them when we take a look at these maps. Over here to the right, we have a restaurant cell point. Let's turn into this lane. Here we have our dump station we can come around the side and then we'll need to follow this road and I believe this road is what's going to ultimately take us up to the carpentry as well as the animal dealer and the sawmill Hopefully then we'll be able to take the road down the western edge of the map in order to get to the next thing. So that road is going to split off to the carpentry facility. 
I think we may just skip the carpentry facility since we cannot actually sell furniture. But oh, check this out. Here we have a building buried in the hillside. I think this is really neat. This is really cool. Here we have our oil mill factory. Now it's spawn point, dump grate, interactive icon. We have our farmer's market sell point for our grains and produced products. And we may need to we may need to go over here in order to get to the sawmill. Let's go and see if this road loops around. Indeed it does. So we have our carpentry, which is conveniently located close to the sawmill which is nice because you know you're gonna to want to bring planks down here to the carpentry but again you're gonna to want to incorporate the sell everything mod at least at this point so we have our wood chips we have our plank spawn point our interactive trigger our log cell point and then our log cell trigger right there Big old, big old field tent. Little field tent to our left and little field 15 to our right. So if you own field 10, why not go ahead and merge field 15 into it, right? I mean, gee, it's big enough. I'm just going to cheat a little bit and run down the western side of the map here. Make your way over here to the dairy and other cell point. well all is well so while this says the farmer's market the farmer's market cell point was up in the other side so here we have a farmer's market we also have the johnson's farmer's market so they are different farmer's markets but we have farmer's market we have our working dairy, so we have our pallet spawn point, our dump station, and our interactive trigger. We have our farm silo, again, which is really well removed from the farm itself, way over here one of the larger base game farm silos. So we have our dump station and our fill pipe right there. Across the street, we have our animal dealer and our animal dealer cell point. The 
stop point there, and then we have our ammo dealer trigger located right here. Next up on the tour is the Stone Crusher. It's going to be located in here between fields 8 and 7. Just flew right past it. There we're a Stone Crusher. Let's go ahead and make our way kind of over to the eastern side of the map. And then we'll start to wrap this whole thing up. I have to say, if you are into European maps with really big, big fields, Oh, sorry, that was a, a sneeze coming along there. So that's what I was saying. If you were into European maps with really, really big fields, then this map is likely going to be right up your alleyway. It's hard to get fields much bigger than this and not have just a very small selection of fields. There's a decent amount of kind of decorative elements. Also... Kind of covering this map. I think I went and missed my turn. Here we go. We're gonna need to run along field four. Just to our left and field seven. This is over here to our right get down to the next point of interest which is going to be our grain mill and our sugar mill here we have our grain facility Well, we had our pallet spawn point there, but nope. Dump station, pallet point, or interactive trigger. This building is simply decorative. We have our pallet spawn point, our interactive trigger, and of course our dump point for our sugar is around the back. Sugar cane, sugar beet, sugar beet cut. We're going to make our way over to oh, field 14, and then that's where we're going to call it for the night. So while we're making our way over to field 14, let's talk about our scoring and wrap this thing up. So we have nine productions built into the map. We're going to give the map a full point there. Now, you may say, yeah, but you can't really use the spinnery. You can't really use the carpentry. And the bakery is kind of, or not the bakery, but the dairy is kind of crippled. Um, but still, we do have production built into the map. We have nine different production areas built into the map. We are going to do the map a full point there. We are going to knock a little bit off three quarters of a point specifically. We're going to give this map with respect to having cell points for all the available crops that you can grow, animal outputs, and production items that you can create in the base game because we do not have the ability to sell fabric, clothes, cereal, chocolate, or furniture. We also are going to give the map just three quarters of a point with respect to the farms being customizable. 
because the main farm does have a fair bit of decorative elements that you cannot sell. And we've got those kind of concrete um, plates that we can't get rid of. We're going to give the map a half a point with respect to buildings using the appropriate texture technique because we do have a fair bit of older textured style buildings. And overall, I do believe that the, t the triggers in interactive areas are clearly marked. We really haven't run into issues on this map where we really were kind of curious where something might actually be. So overall, we're going to give this map a score of a four out of five. Let me know what you all think down in the comments below for Gross Mordor. Is this a map you are going to be interested in playing? And are you digging the large, interestingly shaped fields? Or are you looking for something maybe a little bit more uniform in size and shape? So, till next time, happy farming.